what's going on y'all what it is so let's go ahead and slide on this topic and i want to talk about this diddy and cassie situation because i'm getting word that cassie has turned over evidence to the feds and i've also been exposed to some more information involving the td jake situation so you want to stay tuned for that now before i get started or go any further rather i want to ask you guys to go ahead and follow me on instagram at carolina crush tv just in case something happens here all right but before we get into the T.D. Jakes and the whole Diddy and Cassie situation, I do want to discuss Christian Keys. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with who Christian Keys is, he's a successful writer, actor, and producer. He's even starred in some Tyler Perry movies and plays, and I believe he had his own show on BET called All the Queen's Men's. So the brother is pretty elite at what he does but anyway the brother went live on instagram a couple of days ago and he accused a powerful billionaire of sa and he just looked broken he appeared to be mentally physically and spiritually broken that this happened to him a declaration of my experience um what i experienced with certain powers that be that were moving inappropriately. And I really, like it's in my bone marrow to discuss that because thankfully God built me the way that he built me, but I, I'm not sure, you know, based on this person's claims and, and brags um, that he's, literally got at the same time this person was harassing me for years um he was claiming you know that he had multiple young black men on the payroll and they just had to show up when he was when he requested them to be there and clearly that's why it was, it felt to him that it was okay to say these things. And I, I really, I want to have these discussions. I want to be transparent with y'all about that. I've done my best to forgive this person, but it happens. It happens. Um, it's not just women that have to deal with it, but it's also men sometimes. And it'll be men tempting men. And that's why a lot of my posts over the last few years have been about taking the scenic group, you know, taking the long way around because if that means that you can carry your integrity with you, then. But there are, there are um people that will and have and will continue to unfortunately offer these things and some of them are your heroes some of them are People who y'all like, oh yeah, such and such is amazing, and he does this and he does that. Yeah, but he also does this and that. I, um, at some point soon, it's gonna have to come out. <clears throat> I've kept one of these on me since 05. Um, whether it's a keychain recorder or a pen because most persons would check your phone. And once the harassment started, I was like, well, I need to, I, I gotta protect me because I'm saying no, and I don't want this person as powerful as they are to try to get in the way of my work. So, I started recording, so I have them offering me money to take my clothes off. I have recordings when I wasn't working with them or for them. Um, 
I have recordings of them confessing that, you know, the other guys that they have on the payroll, all of the above. Um, and the difference is, the wonderful thing about confidentiality agreements and non-disclosure agreements is that they can't prevent you from turning all of those things over to the police because harassment is a crime, attempted assault is a felony. And Tams, you literally just asked, why do we as black people have to deal with that? But sometimes it's our own people. Sometimes it's our own heroes. It's the, sometimes it's the very people we deify. And we look up like, oh, they're doing so much. They're doing so much. No, they're also doing this. And my only reservation about naming the people, you know, there was directors along the way like, hey, you know, you read for this, that, and the other. You want to come back up to the apartment? I'm like, nah, I'm good. You got my headshot, my resume, and I'm good. You know if I can handle that or not. You know I can kill that. But I'm not, I don't need to come up to your apartment. We already had the audition. There's other people that... I want to say everything. And my brother was like, nah, not yet. I want to tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. I want to speak on it. And the good news is that they don't even have to believe me. Hopefully they would, but even if they don't, they can hear this person. Since sex harassment started, I've carried many recorder devices on me, keychains, pens, um, thumb drives with a, a charged battery that get six, seven, eight hours, all the above. So I have the conversations. I really want to air that, that shit out because it bothers me when I'm alone at night. Like, man, they, the world is celebrating this person and they don't even know the shady and predatory way in which this person moves. And the way that, you know, predators resent the prey that gets away. So when you don't say yes, when you don't say, okay, I'll acquiesce and, you know, sign up and literally and figuratively play ball, because we're not doing that, they resent you. This is a conversation we're gonna have and we're gonna have soon because it, it bothers me in my spirit that you can, I can forgive people, that's one thing. But yeah, P, we don't play ball. That's my brother in there. Um, and he knows the real deal. He knows the who. Um, I'm good. Somebody said, you don't look okay. I'm okay. I'm, I, I, have, I have peace. I'm literally strategically planning my next eight moves. I'm good. God got me because he was watching when I was offered these opportunities and I didn't say yes. I didn't sell my soul or my ass. Excuse my French, y'all. I know some of y'all, hopefully y'all have no kids around, but I didn't sell nothing for success. Like, nah, that's not what I want. You know, I I ain't into that. I ain't into dudes. It's, it's, I'm the, I got an only beard in the bed policy. Mine is the only beard in the bed. Yeah, we not, we ain't doing none of that. I don't, I don't get out like that. And these people kept on for years. Sex harassment is a crime. Attempted sexual assault is a felony. And... Where I'm at now is that in the middle of the night, I think about if I'm brave enough to 
name the person. I'll take a polygraph live. I'll take five polygraphs live. And I'll pass all of them because it's the truth. This person is a and he's one of several. Um, and it's a shame, man. But it's, I think it's time. It's, I want to, and I know, P, I know you're on here. I want to say everything now. And I have proof. It's not like I'm just making false accusations. I intentionally let the statute of limitations expire. It's not about money, but... I'm going to take, I'm going to have to take the receipts, the recordings down to the police department and let them hear this individual. I wasn't working for him in the month and the year that he showed up to my apartment and offered me a hundred grand to take my clothes off. He said, I don't even need to touch you. I just want to see you. I declined. Because again, scenic group, I got my integrity with me. I'll, I'll take the long way around. But being that I wasn't working with him and we were in my apartment. He had visited my apartment to offer me a job of this fall because the lead of this particular project was going to do something else, so he needed another lead. I recorded it because I didn't trust him, and I had told him over and over, and he still always tried, just tried. So if people don't believe me, they can hear him in his voice. I have always kept something on me. Always. Even if my phone is off. Something else is if I'm around somebody that has tried to sexually harass me, pressure me, intimidate me into some nonsense, I've always kept something on me. So I can protect myself because if they're that powerful and they feel that entitled, then they they can also try to get in the way of your work. Um, I want to speak on it. I also want to keep making great things and and creating jobs and opportunities. But oh no, I got backups for the backups for the backups for the backups. I've watched way too many Jason Bourne movies not to have 15 backups. I can press play and you can hear the person and you'll know immediately who the person is that's offering me a hundred grand to strip. You'll know right away and it'll break your heart. I won't have to say the person's name. But I can and I will. I don't mind doing a polygraph or three or five on live TV and I'll pass all of them because it's the truth. This industry is something else. It's wonderful and we get to chase our dreams and we get to live other lives. I get to be a judge or an FBI agent. I get to be a, a girl dad. And some of the people that you think are your mentors are literally and figuratively just trying to f you. I have documentation from the dealership for the car that they tried to buy as an apology for 
offering me a hundred grand to strip. It's it's time. I really I really want to just clear the air because I'm I'm tired. And then where I'm at now, it's if it still feels like that person is fucking with you just to fuck with you, just to mess with you. The industry can be wonderful. I'm grateful. Be clear that this person showed me how not to be. When I'm a boss, people get daps and church hugs. The attractive women that work on, on even even on my shows, my my productions, they get daps and church hugs. That's it. Because this person showed me how not to be when I'm in charge and when I built something and when I created something. I hear you, Pernell. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to dial it back. You get on my nerves because I know you're right, but I'm, it, it's in my bone marrow and I'm tired of this person gallivanting around doing these PR stunts. Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. Well, then speak on, if you want to have, We're going to have a conversation, y'all, really soon. Really, really soon. Really soon. And I'm, I, I thank God that he made me the way that I am. Because I know he sat back and watched. Like, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to acquiesce and take this movie that's going to make 60, 70, 80 million dollars. Are you going to take this this picture? Are you going to go to that late night audition? That late night table read? No. You ain't built me like that. I mean, beat got at, stomped out more than most of the people that are here on this live put together. P, I'm going to call you in a minute. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to air it out. But I'm so f***ing close because I'm tired. I'm tired. And it needs to be told. And the bad part is I'm going to be I'm going to be painted as the villain when I was the one that was harassed for years years bullied intimidated and harassed for years and i'm gonna be painted as the villain because y'all have deified this person and then if a person tells you over and over first of all in general you have no right to touch anybody none none now, that's why I'm careful. Like when I do my shows and everything, you know, it's just church hugs. I put the veils on and I, I kiss people on the hair up here. Nothing, nothing weird, nothing crazy. And, and I'm trusting that, you know, the fans will receive that out of a place of love and connection. But you are not allowed to touch somebody without their permission. Not allowed to try to touch them in a private place without their permission. And if they've already declared like, hey, bruh, I get that that's your thing, but I like black women in Hennessy. And so miss me with the bullshit because I'm never going to be open to that. I'm never going to swing at that pitch. Like I, I'm batting for this team over here. God made ovaries and fallopian tubes and vagina. Le it's just wonderful over here. So I'm going to stay over here, like, chill. And then this person still tries to grab you, physically grab you. Cassie speaking out has given me, has reminded me about, not, not just me, because it was brutal going through it, because it lasted for years. But her speaking out, people need to know. And
The funny thing is, like that, they resent the prey that got away. They resent the prey that got away. The prey that didn't fold. The prey that didn't acquiesce and, and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this L and sacrifice my morals for this opportunity. Nah. That was around the time that I was considering going back to Michigan. 08, 09. Because work was slow and the work that was coming was was offered with a side of peace. And yeah, that don't do nothing for me. I'm bad for your team. So, um, yeah, I, at some point soon, I've spoken with my attorney trying to figure out how to deal with it. It's never been about money. I, I literally intentionally let the statute of limitations pass. It's not about money or being able to sue. But at some point, really soon, the police report is going to be filed and I'll turn over the recordings of the inappropriate behaviors and the inappropriate offers and I'll turn over the paperwork for the car that was bought as an apology for offering me $100,000 to take my clothes off. And y'all can hear him. His voice is very distinctive. And I want to I wanna empty. I'm tired of carrying this. There's a reason now why I fight more than ever when somebody wrongs me and why I almost too aggressively speak up is because I wasn't brave enough to then. And I, I regret not being able to be strong enough and I resent that part of me that wasn't strong enough to speak up about it. It's taking everything in me not to air out everything and put all the recordings online, put all the paperwork and the PDFs online. Uh, there's no reason that this person's company would be on the bill of sale for a vehicle unless it's right after the time stamped recording of him offering me a hundred grand to take my clothes off. He said, I don't have to touch you. I just want to see you next. What? The f what? Like, you know, I'm not into that. I don't, I don't f like that. I don't do that. What? The f what? Leave. Get the f out. Get the f out. Get out. I thought you were my brother and my friend. And this definitely has nothing to do with my brother who's in here. Be clear. I thought this person was a brother type figure, a mentor, mentor type figure. But for you to continuously throw these opportunities, you know good and damn well, all it ever was, was you pretending to be a mentor trying to get some That'll never happen. I don't bat for that team. Yeah, but I gotta get off of here and talk to my brother because I'm I'm so close to just airing everything out. I'm just dumping everything online in the morning. I'm tired, man. I'm not forgiving myself. I didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't brave enough back then because somebody said forgive yourself. KG. It's, it's heavy on my heart, man, and I'm tired. And we around here deifying people that go out and do this, and I'm going I'm to do this, and I'm going to pay off this, and I'm going to pay off that, and I'm going to pay off that. But at the same time, these same people are pressed. I'm not... blaming myself for saying no. I'm not blaming myself for almost quitting acting. I'm just mad at me for not being brave enough to say something sooner. That's the only thing that I regret. 
I wish I'd have been brave enough. I'm him now. I'm bra- I, I know who I am. I know who God built me to be. And I'm not afraid of those consequences. My concern is that a lot of y'all are going to be like, man. And your immediate reaction is going to be like, oh, well, we got to protect our deity. We got to protect... It's going to have to happen. I'm interested to see which peers are mad at me because it may interfere with their work. But, yeah. You get a grown man that knows that you're heterosexual and you're sleeping off Hennessy in his guest room. Because he says it's safe. Because you know, I know I'm bad, so I'm at their big party. Won't say what type, won't say where. I'm sleep, I'm, I'm gone, because I'm four, five Hennessy's deep, and not short Hennessy's either. And this dude tries to climb into bed with you. So you spaz out, push him out, like what the Get ready to leave. He apologizes. Blame it on the alcohol. And you try to forgive him. So you're like, all right, man. All right, I'm gone. You shake his hand on the way out, and he tries to grab you. He tries to shake and grab your equipment. And you spaz even more. I'm like, what the f- are you doing, man? What the f- you? What the? F- oh my bad, my bad. But so you go to leave. He tries to do it again. Now, at that point, my only regret is not breaking multiple bones in this person's face. Like dog shit this person, right? Because that's available to me at all times. That inner grizzly bear is always available, but in the moment I'm like, what the f what the f and what the f-? But you got a guy that's a billionaire and I got three grand in my bank account who are they going to believe right I got that three grand that's my son's mom's rent for next month you know got to make sure little man's taken care of that's my rent and that's a little bit for the gas tank and the rest of it I can go to the dollar store and get some bread and bologna and hot dogs and mustard and, and you know I can get by work was slow and a lot of the work that was coming was it had attached to it. I'm like, man, I'm not, that's not what I want. That's not what I'm about to do. I regret not speaking up then, not being brave enough to, and I regret not hurting this person because I'm a, I'm a, I got a big heart. Mother had a big heart. Mother's heart was as big as Flint, Michigan. She was like, look, little, little, little yellow boy, you finna come and you gonna be a part of my family. And I always try to think about things, you know, and not lash out, even though I wanted to. Even though I want to. I'm mad at me for not hearing. I'm mad at me for not speaking up and saying something. Because between that year and now, how many young black actors have fell for that? How many of them, and you can hear him say it on, on you can hear him on the, on the conversations. You can hear him on the conversations. You can hear him say that he has several guys 
multiple guys on payroll, six figures a year, that pop up and they do whatever he wants and they go back home. So they pop in, they grab their ankles, they do whatever he wants. And I'm like, I'm not do that. I'm not doing that. I don't want to make it that bad. I want to be able to shave and without any grief or any regret or any shame waiting for me in the mirror. All right, so you guys just heard most of what Christian Keys had to say about the situation. If you want to hear the whole entire thing, you can go to his Instagram and he has it posted there. Now, Claudia Jordan actually spoke out in support of Christian and basically she posted to her Instagram story and said, he told me some of this 15 years ago verbatim and said one day he was going to come forward. I know it's scary. I commend him for his bravery. Now, there's heavy speculation, mounting speculation that he's talking about Tyler Perry, right? And when you take into account that there's only 100 billionaires in the whole wide world and only nine of them happen to be melanated you have robert smith david stewart jay-z oprah winfrey michael jordan alex carp tiger woods lebron james and tyler perry so we know that oprah has a sketchy past but christian happens to be talking about a male here and the fact that he's worked with tyler perry or for tyler perry before and the fact that there's heavy speculation that tyler perry has been intimate with men it's not hard to put two and two together and say christian is calling out tyler perry now christian did go on to say that if if anything happens to him that his family has the receipts and this particular person will not be able to get away with what he done to him now speaking of tyler perry did y'all see pastor gino jennings go off on tyler perry and td jakes let me go ahead and play this for y'all and i'll be right back love and tyler perry became rich by committing abomination yeah just in like a woman ain't nothing funny about it go ahead brother back in like a city. now up trying to be a motivational speaker a preacher <laughs> still making money from a deer and still trying to motivate motivate what who go who's motivating <laughs> is it Medea or Tyler yeah yeah trifling no mm. good things that play with the name of the Lord Jesus and you preachers are scared to say anything because you feel honored for these fakers coming in your church that's right <laughs> when Tyler gave Jake's that million dollars? Jake's look like something that came out of a carnival. Yes, he did. Tyler went off on that fake tongue. Oh, stop. Then laid his hands on the devil. And Jake stood there on television. <laughs> <laughs> then after he did that, he went into another thing. The devil kept, the devil kept uppercut. The upper, that's right. <laughs> that wasn't no Holy Ghost. No. That was a million dollar ghost. That's right. Oh, no Holy Ghost. That was a million dollar ghost. You sick religious things keep playing with God. Yeah. All right, so you guys just saw and heard that and Pastor Jennings is no joke, right? He keeps it all the way 100. Now, one thing that I did take away from that is the fact that when Kristen Key said in his video that the particular person, this billionaire, was trying to be a motivational speaker and within Pastor Jennings' commentary in regards to Tyler, he basically alluded to the fact that Tyler was trying to be some type of motivational speaker as well. So I'm going to pay close attention to this situation. And if you ask me right now, do I think it's Tyler? I absolutely do think it's Tyler all signs point to him but anyway guys this has been too long of a video let me go ahead and get into this electrifying email and it says here yo bro cassie has turned over substantial amounts of evidence to the feds i'm told that after cassie had a long conversation with blank i have to protect this person they're going through a lot right now and her lawyers she finally was convinced to give up the videotapes and audio recordings that contain footage of s parties and other private gatherings that feature some pretty powerful and prominent people and get this she even gave up a burner phone and usbs that belong to kim porter with incriminating evidence against diddy i'm told that there are a slew of artists politicians and entertainers that are about to be exposed and arrested for h10 i'm paraphrasing there okay h10 
I'm told that Cassie's husband played a significant role in getting Cassie to turn over the evidence. It's to my understanding that Cassie felt that by exposing the truth, it would also make her look like a filthy more. And I'm paraphrasing there because some of the videos she turned in, it shows her getting number one on number one. OK, guys, I'm paraphrasing again and committing more disgusting acts that she was forced to do. I'm also told that multiple male escorts corroborated the fact that T.D. Jakes have slept with multiple men at Diddy's parties and abroad and they refer to him as being a power bottom. Wow. It's also been said that a young male has acquired a lawyer to represent him as he is set to sue Jakes for an incident that took place when he was just years old. It's been said that the young man was forced to perform sloppy toppy. And I'm paraphrasing here, guys. You can actually put two and two together to understand what I'm trying to say. It's been said that the man's family were members of the Potter's house, but left the church in 2015. According to multiple church insiders, the parents were paid off to keep quiet. The guy's a grown man now and is seeking his own justice. It's been said that the young man doesn't even deal with his parents even to this day because they took hush money. According to Pastor Blank, and I have to protect this pastor, Bishop Jakes is about to get railroaded and all of his dirt will be exposed. That's why the bishop has quietly lawyered up. He sees his fall from grace coming. All right, so you guys just heard that. Now I do want to protect the integrity of my platform and say that everything that I just conveyed to you is all alleged, all right? But it's interesting, guys, you heard it here first that the feds actually has Kim Porter's burner phone and USBs. It's about to go down. It is really about to go down. And poor Cassie too, because I'm pretty sure it was hard for her to give up those videotapes because she's on those tapes and they're doing some very disgusting things to her. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't want anybody to see that, but to expose, you know, the wickedness of Diddy, she had to put it out there. It was best for her to do so. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna let this go right here. I want you guys to drop down and let me know what you think about everything that was discussed within this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.